Greetings fellow e-bike adventurers and as we reach the spring and look forward to the summer ahead uh, it's time for some of that inevitable shopping. <laughs> At this time of year we go ooh it would be nice to have X and my big purchase this year is I've upgraded my bike computer uh, from the standard Bosch uh, system in Tuva possibly it's called uh, to the new Nyan CM21. Uh, so I've only had it 36 hours, this isn't going to be a full review, but I've done quite a lot of initial testing and so these are my initial impressions uh, of just how useful this system is and also a hope, which is as yet untested, that I can use it to increase my battery range. I'll deal with that at the end of this video. So today is an exciting day because I'm getting my computer uh, upgraded on the bike from the standard Bosch one. Uh, to the Neon, Nyon unit, I think it's Nyon. Uh, I'll bring you through what the standard one is and then later on when I've got the new one I can show you what the difference is. So this is the standard unit. Uh, I think it's in, in two vehicles. Um, and it's got multiple things on the display here. At the moment, as you can see, it's showing us the range. Uh, if I push the information button, you can see it's now showing us the total distance I've cycled on the bike. So uh, that's 14,272 kilometers. This is the distance since I last reset the counter, uh, which is the last service, in fact, 837 kilometers. The time, uh, the max speed I've reached since I last reset. The average speed and the trip time that's the number of hours I've spent in the saddle basically so I've now had that uh, neon unit for about 36 hours uh, so I thought I'd do a quick first look at it this isn't a full review I would want to have used it a lot more uh, before I would do that and I've only really started discovering features on it but uh, this is just going to be a quick look at what I've discovered so far and what's possible. I've cycled about 35 kilometers at the moment. Okay, so pretty much immediately you can see it looks different. I will start off with the feature I really hate, uh, which is the buttons. What buttons, you might say? Uh, so, uh, if you remember the Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy, that had a, a joke about a black spaceship that had black panels with black buttons, that black lights that lit up on it. And an awful lot of uh, tech manufacturers seem to have decided that's the way to go, including Bosch. You may not be able to see those, but there is in fact an on switch here and a switch for the lights there. And the switch for the lights was so hard to spot that after I picked this up from being serviced, from being installed, I then cycled home in the dark and couldn't find the light switch till I got home and could have a good look. Anyway, so that's the bit I don't like. Uh, the control unit is somewhat similar. It's smaller than the uh, Inspiron one. Um, the big difference is a touch screen. Okay, so going back to this screen, what this is showing me is the amount of effort going in and that uh, will be divided into the effort put in by the motor and the effort put in by me. I'll cut in a clip here that actually shows you that working in practice. So this view as I cycle uh, is showing you the effort that's going into cycling and it's got two bars. The lighter green bar is the effort I'm putting in the darker green bar is the effort the motor is putting in. And as we come up here, if I... Yeah, so now I have turned up to tour mode and in tour mode you can see that the effort the motor is putting in is now bigger than the effort I was putting in. In sport mode, <laughs> the effort the motor is putting in is much bigger and in turbo mode it's massively bigger. I never really use those two modes. Uh, I use tour towards the end of the day if I'm tired and I have battery capacity left, but I mostly try and stay in eco. Uh, it's got the estimate of the range and then the distance done on this trip. Uh, at the moment it seems to be resetting the trip um, every time it's off for a while. The previous 
unit would keep a trip going until you reset it and I would actually keep that going for many days at a time that may be something I can fix in settings uh, we have the mode indicator up here telling me it's an eco I haven't really got out of eco yet uh, okay so we have the distance that I've done this morning five kilometers um, top speed uh, my current altitude uh, and we have the map showing me where I am. That's kind of neat. Uh, that does turn by turn navigation as well. Um, and then we have the mode usage for this trip so far. So 100% of the time in eco, max speed of 30, ascent of 19 meters so far, 63% of the effort coming from me and 37% coming from the engine. Those are all great stats. These are the standard... Uh, ones and at first I was going oh I kind of wish there was more info and then I realized you can actually add your own additional windows which includes additional information not available elsewhere this is the first of these so this is really cool <laughs> what this does is it's telling me how much I've saved two euros 20 over if I was using a car and then if I touch the icon in the center here it switches to how much carbon dioxide I have saved, uh, which I think is 4.2 kilograms so far. Really like that. Uh, it'll help me justify my annual holiday in Lanzarote. <laughs> I on the grounds that I've saved uh, what I've used in the, in the flight uh, many times over during the year cycling. Uh, and then there's this screen, which I've set up to have many of the kind of longer metrics. So total distance done on the bike so far, 14,300. The trip distance, the maximum power and wattage, average power and wattage. These are new things I didn't have before. Uh, my cadence, which I also didn't have access to before. And its estimate of how many calories I've used in the cycle, which I would presume is more accurate than the uh, one I used to get for my Apple Watch. So those are all cool new features. Uh, this is the setup panel on it. I'll go through these properly in a full review. Uh, and, and once I've worked out how more of this works, but you can see here there's battery indicators. Confusingly, that one, so this is the bike battery up here, 81%. I really like the fact it's in percent rather than the old one, which only had four, five bars, which would go down. It was quite hard to work out uh, where exactly you were beyond that. Uh, this one down here, I'm a little confused by, but I think it's actually my mobile phone battery. I thought it was the battery in the device itself. <laughs> there is a battery for the device itself somewhere in here, I think. Yes, this is one of the things I have to work out. So as I said, this isn't an actual review. This is just a first look at it. Uh, so far, I'm pretty happy with it. Haven't really tested out the navigation yet. Haven't really seen what else can go on. Uh, and I also haven't spent much time looking at the web interface, which collects a lot of this information together for you. So the next cool feature of the Nyon is what you can do with the data collected uh, because it syncs both with your account on the Bosch Bosch eBike Connect website uh, and also with an app you can have on your phone. Uh, so I'm going to give a quick look at the website so we can see what we get. Uh, so from that ride this morning, you can see it's given me an awful lot of detail here. Uh, distance, duration, all these stats, ascent, descent, maximum heart rate. It's syncing with my Apple Watch, so my Apple Watch is measuring my heart rate. Um, and then uh, the cadence, both the average and the maximum, and the user power, and the number of calories I burnt. So uh, anyone who's been following me for a while, and in particular if you've been following me from uh, before I started bicycle touring, I used to do a podcast on COVID. Uh, called Plague Tapes. Uh, well, no, I love data. I'm, I'm completely fascinated by data. I love pouring through it to find out uh, what it can tell me. Uh, so all this uh, new information I now have access to is fantastic. Um, so then if we scroll down here, it also gives you a lot of this information in graphical form. So this is over the period of my ride. Um, and we, if I uncheck some of these perhaps, so there's the altitude covered, uh, and I can compare the altitude covered with my heart rate. And you can certainly see, yes, my heart rate goes up often when I cycle uphill. Not much of a surprise there. Uh, we can look at the power contribution. 
coming from the engines, compare that with the altitude, and again, I, as you might expect, you'd see a match. So loads of things you can play around with here. Uh, it's also given me a figure overall for this ride, where it says the engine contributed 38% and I contributed 32%. Next feature it has is route planning. Uh, so I can import routes from cycle.travel. And here's one I'm thinking of doing in the future. Uh, and yeah, so it's it, it's taken that route in from cycle.travel, put it on its own map. Uh, and then when I cycle, I can be looking at the display and it will show me where I need to turn and all that. Uh, enormously useful, that means I can basically take my phone off the handlebars. Uh, I was using my phone for that sort of navigation. Um, now that has two benefits. One is possibly not great for the phone in terms of handlebar vibration, in particular the um, the stabilization uh, mechanism for the camera apparently can get damaged by vibration. I never noticed that happening, but certainly I prefer not to damage a phone that's you know costing what's it about fourteen hundred euro or whatever. Um, and then the second thing is that the problem with having your you know, phone mounted on the handlebars, and I found a good solution for this, a kind of claw it sits in, uh, is that if you want to take a picture, you then have to kind of get your phone out of the mount take the picture then put it back in afterwards so typically if you're cycling around somewhere very scenic in Scotland or Donegal or Kerry or whatever and around every corner there's something you know it, the views just keep getting better uh, you can't really pull the phone off every time it's too much hassle to do that so if instead my phone could sit in my pocket get taken out take a snap that'll be handy um also, of course, in my last video, I talked about the challenges of trying to keep all your other devices charged when you're on the road. Not so much the battery of the bike, but, you know, phones, head torches, uh, GoPros, all that sort of thing. Uh, I post the link to that. Um, and, of course, uh, if my phone isn't doing the navigation, then that's one less thing to go flat. The Nyan is pulling its, its power from the uh, battery of the bike. So that's another great feature on it. Um, and then the final feature I quite like is if you go to your own bike and you have a look, it's got some information on it. So this is, it's nice. I wish it was better. Um, it's got part numbers and all that sort of thing. Interesting enough, uh, I kind of wish it would give you some information that might tell you about wear and tear on it. You know, what distance the drive had done, all that sort of thing. Uh, and then the battery is the same thing. It, it's got the software version, so I can see I've got three batteries. Uh, and I can see that one of my power packs currently has 1.11 as the software and the other is 1.12.1. Uh, so really, I should get this one updated. It's better to have uh, running the most modern software and my 400 watt battery likewise is 1.11.0. So it's got the three batteries. Uh, it's got the identifying features of the three batteries. What I would really love, and hopefully someone from Bosch will hear this and go, he's right, you know, we should add this, is I would love the sort of battery help information that Apple provide. Uh, how many uh, charge cycles have your battery been through? You know, these batteries are probably good for 500. Uh, so it'd be good to know when you're at 450 and, you know, you might be looking at the battery deteriorating in the future. And then also what is the current battery capacity as a percentage of its original one? I particularly like this feature of, of phones uh, where you can see, oh, this battery is now only charging to 96% of what it used to. And two months ago, I remember that was 98%. So you have an idea of what point you need to replace the that. I suspect Bosch are keeping the diagnostic software for their um, uh, mechanic partners, uh, you know, as part of the thing. Uh, but I think ba basic battery health indica indicators and things like that will be useful in terms of knowing when you needed to buy a new one. I mean, this is particularly relevant for the issue of touring because if you're setting off on a really long tour, you might not realize that your battery is actually more or less reaching the end of its life. And then you discover midway through tour that suddenly it's only taking half the charge it's used to, and that would be a genuine nuisance. So that's the one thing I would like to see improved. Um, the final thing I mentioned in there, you know, I have to find it. Ah, yes. So custom riding modes. This is what I'm interested in, in terms of can I use this to actually improve my battery range? Now, Bosch charge extra for unlocking this. You have to unlock it on the app. I think it's $4.99. It's not terribly expensive. But if we click edit here. So what this is, is the um, the existing computer 
uh, has four modes eco tour sport and uh turbo right and at the moment this i think is probably what these four modes would actually look like right so they're interesting because it's something i hadn't previously realized but it's kind of obvious in retrospect is when you get to 18 kilometers an hour it starts to reduce it to zero uh, by the time it reaches 25 kilometers an hour in terms of the assist uh, and that actually does make sense because it means that rather than feeling you're hitting a wall when you hit 25 it gradually scales down and I sort of noticed that happening actually uh, even in terms of the uh, readout on this uh, old unit where it gives you uh, the, the the relative energy coming out of the engine and you know once you went over 20 you could see it was starting to tail off anyway that's how this currently works so what they now allow you to do is you can have up to four custom settings as well and so what I'm thinking is this is the current eco setting where it's starting off at somewhere here it's starting off at about 60%, so maybe this isn't identical to the current ones. Uh, but say instead, I think the current eco setting is a 40% assist, right? So say instead I decided to set that up as a 20% assist. And what's more, set it up as a 20% assist, that would fall to t only 10% uh, once you went over, what's that, about 14, 15 kilometers an hour. Uh, it would tail off and then tail off to zero. Now, in theory, maybe that would increase my battery, uh, the range of the bike by doubling it, or maybe 50%. Hard to know exactly. Uh, I suspect the relationship isn't quite that simple, but if I'm cutting from 20 to 40%, you, uh, uh, from 40% to 20% assist, you can see why you might hope to double it, but you'd certainly expect you might get a 50% increase. So in other words, rather than maybe getting 120, 130 kilometers out of one of those 500 watt batteries, uh, I might be hoping for something that's closer to 200. Now that would be huge. Of course, now I've got to be working harder to get that 200. Uh, and in practice, maybe I won't. And then I could use this, uh, the next setting up as something similar to the old tour setting. But again, less assistance as you go higher. Uh, I would leave the top one in place because the top one is, oh my God, I can't cycle up this hill anymore. I desperately need more power uh, on very steep hills. And that's the one you could actually turn that into. Although what you might do is pull the, um, the, the last setting down a good bit uh, so that once you're going above, you know, 15 kilometers an hour, that reduces. I hadn't previously noticed this. It does actually allow you to pull the point of these cutoffs back and forth again as well and then your third setting could be more like uh, it's the end of the day i'm kind of tired uh, get me home a little bit faster um so those three would all be a substantial power saving potentially on what your previous ones were and uh, this top one is still in the absolutely desperate circumstances it's still going to get you out that I'm going to have to test. <laughs> I'm really interested to see if that will work in practice and what it would feel like. Uh, and uh, then I'll kind of uh, do a much more detailed review uh, when I've actually discovered these. As I said, only been using this maybe 36 hours so far. Um, I would not do what I'd consider to be a review after 36 hours. I definitely want really a couple of thousand kilometers maybe so maybe i'm not going to do this till i get back from my trip to spain that will be my big test but uh i thought i'd mention it even at this early stage because obviously if i'm right about this and that greatly increases battery range that's a pretty transformative thing in opening up possibilities uh in particular that trip that i'm thinking of doing um uh, in the long term of of cycling down through Europe and then down to Africa and maybe heading down as far as South Africa because there's long distances there where you're not going to be able to get a recharge and that might get me over that so I'm very excited by this want to test it out see how it works in terms of how it works um in the on the control unit uh, you then have two choices one is the settings they give you and the other is custom settings so if, you, if I'm setting up my Spanish trip, I discover I really don't like these. Uh, it's easy enough to flip them back. But anyway, that will all be coming to you in the future. So hopefully this quick introduction uh, to the new Nyan, uh, my introduction to the Nyan has been useful. Uh, do give the channel a follow if you found it useful. 
and give the video a thumbs up like because uh, that'll help the algorithm understand that really more people need to see this uh, this is now probably video 125 or something on the channel so if you're looking go back through the archive have a look through it all and if you do want to follow my trips live uh, then what you want to be doing is also following my instagram account uh, when i stop and i take those roadside photos i post them pretty much instantly to instagram so when I'm actually out on the road, uh, you'll be getting a kind of moment by moment account of what's actually happening with me. It's only afterwards I get them uploaded to YouTube. Uh, so anyway, thanks for watching and I'm looking forward to the summer. I hope you are too.